Welcome to Barely Stable, an intermediate level podcast. Hosted by Daniel Freeberg and Nick Barr. Produced by Daniel Rigdon, studio engineer Trevor Williamson. A cool disc golf podcast for intermediate players. This is the Barely Stable Podcast. Live from beautiful Austin, Texas, this is the Barely Stable Podcast. We're ready to BS. Here are your Barely Stable hosts, Daniel Freeberg and Nick Barr. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Barely Stable Podcast. As always, here with my best friend, Daniel Freeberg. How are we doing, man? Doing all right. How are y'all? Uh... Got some new, uh, got some new camera positioning. See the hot ones again. Yeah, we do. Back better. in the booth with the new camera, we got uh, Mr. Rigdon and Mr. Williamson. How are we doing, boys? I'm doing good. Wonderful. I thought I, I thought I was your best friend, so I'm feeling a little conflicted right now. But uh, it's it's okay. It's there okay. can only be one. I'm sorry. It's yeah. okay. You can be, but you're gonna have to chop my head off. <laughs> good luck with yeah, that. Good um, luck with good that. Good luck with that. My neck is thick. Well, we've got an awesome show for you guys today. Uh, we are going to go over a very awesome thing that happened to one of our very own, Trevor Williamson. He got to play in the qualifier event for the Open in Austin, which is happening this week here in Austin, Texas. So we got to go. I uh, actually caddied for him. So I got to walk the course with him as he battled and was just a stroke short of uh, qualifying for the round. Uh, we'll get to that in just a moment, though. But we're going to preview the entire course of the Open in Austin at the Harvey Pennant Golf Complex here in Austin, Texas. And then we are going to go over our draft results fantasy uh, draft. for our fantasy draft. Uh, all that and more here on this episode of the Barely Stable Cod Podcast. Uh, what do you think, buddy? I'm excited. Stay with us. Welcome back, everybody. This is the Barely Stable Podcast. Hope you enjoyed that awesome commercial. Um, we're here. We're going to talk about the 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 qualifier round for the Open in Austin. You got to caddy. Trevor got to play. Super psyched about it. Would have loved to play myself, but uh, had to have a minimum of a 930 rated uh, uh, rating. Uh, to be able to play. And I'll tell you, now we have goals. I didn't. Yeah. never had really a rating goal ever, but 930 is now a goal because... Not that I would have a flying chance necessarily, but to be able to play and just participate would have been incredible. The uh, like the mood was electric, like it was tense, like you could tell everyone was very focused, like everyone was very much like thinking about their game. Um, that's why I felt like it was going to be very competitive because it didn't seem like anyone was very loose until well, we had one guy in our car that got a little loose, maybe three quarters of the way through, but <laughs> um, he had good reasons for it. But um, it was a very very um, eye opening thing to see people compete. On a where they there's how many forty five people I think competed and three of them were getting a chance. Yeah, it's so a very there was small field yeah, of people getting. There in, was right? only winning. There was yeah. no getting fourth or no getting a top ten. There was no cashing. There was can I win? And they don't even get a rating or anything. It looks like they uh, the scoring. I was you were talking about. Oh, Trevor's doing really well, and I was like, I looked everywhere to find the scoring. I, I that unsanctioned. Wasn't, yeah, yeah, it was weird. There was an unsanctioned round. That was weird, wasn't it? Uh, a little, a little bit. Um. I don't know. I kind of liked the old school nature of it all. Uh, the uh, tournament director is PDGA number 200. He's a legend. Yeah. It's, it's kind of awesome to have him kicking things off and uh, sending everyone out to their hole, right? For sure. Yeah. Uh, shout out uh, Neil Dombra. Neil Dombra. So, um, yeah. Uh, you want me to talk about it? Yeah. 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 Uh, well, I mean, we started off on, we had to go start at hole 17, right? Seven. Hole seven. Oh, seven. Sorry, not 17. Hole seven. Uh, yeah, so I'll start off with saying uh, Nick caddied for me for the first time. Like, I don't think I've ever actually had a caddy other than uh, my dad. So I've never caddied before either, so also my first time. Oh, yeah. A lot, yeah. Of, a lot of lessons learned. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, he started off strong. Uh, he had the, the whole caddy book printed out, which was, he went above and beyond on that. And, um, you know, it helped. We we threw to the wrong pin on one hole. That that's honestly my fault. I didn't even look at it or talk to you before the before the hole. But uh, anyways, it was uh, I, I went into it thinking you know six or seven down was was going to qualify because that's what qualified last year. Um, so and I also like I also was not super expecting to do that. 
So I was just like happy to be there to play the course um, and see the new design and everything. So I had a good attitude going into it and um, I was throwing really well and uh, putting, putting not so well. Um, so by like the fourth or fifth circle one miss, I was like, okay, you know, chances are getting smaller. Um, I was like sitting around even pretty much the whole time. Yeah. Um, and that's where I finished. No. And while this was, while this was happening though, you had no idea what everybody else is doing. Right. Because there's no digital scorecard, right? Like right. you're, right. you're only paper score pen cards. and paper. So yeah, only the card in front of you. Even our card didn't really know how we were doing based on the paper scorecard, but that's another story that we'll get to in a minute. <laughs> um, yeah, so, um, well, we could probably talk about it now. Uh, okay, yeah. I figured out, we finally figured out, I shot even. Yeah. Um, uh, we just got a mix up in the scorecard, so we had to, like, relive the entire round. <laughs> um, which a couple of the card mates knew for sure they were out of it, and I just kind of assumed, too, even. There was a lot of really good players in this qualifier and yeah. it was like there's no way that's good enough but we get to the table it turns out i'm in a three-way tie for the last spot yeah um and uh and uh we'll talk about the course later but we the first playoff hole was hole 18 yeah uh, which is one of the two hardest holes on the course so uh i end up getting to go last and i watched the first two guys absolutely pure their drives way down the fairway and i mean as good as you can throw as good as anyone's gonna throw it all weekend yeah and i hit grip locked and uh first available ob and oh, so uh wow. yeah and then it was over but i was so yeah one stroke better and i would have been in uh been playing the open at austin That's absolutely cool. and you guys had a bunch of uh pro sightings out there while you're out there so uh... a handful of pro sightings uh a handful of people were practicing uh wasn't really looking around though. It was more so focused on the hole and like kind of the task at hand. Uh, there was a couple people that were practicing as we got out there, and we saw some people practice putting as we were uh, finishing up. But when we got back to the tent, there was actually two spots available for the for the people who shot even. And then the last card that came in bumped two remaining spots to one spot. So the three people who had shot even had to go to 18. And I mean, I don't want to spoil it or the course preview we're about to do, but 18 is a bugger. Like that is just is tough. I mean, the whole and you're hitting a channel off the box, then you have to push straight three. It's, I mean, it's, you've got to like push left the whole way, but not fade. Right. Um. So it's a very interesting shot. Uh, yeah. And all OB all the way on the right and the left. So uh, yeah, it's yeah. Well, we'll let's go through it. Try yeah. Um. Do you want to start at the top? Yeah. Let's, let's yeah. start on hole one. Hole one. Um. So they moved hole one, right? So hole one used to be. Uh, a little bit different. You have to walk kind of the back corner of the course to start. Uh, now, as soon as you get there at parking, hole one kind of starts at the, um, I guess that's where 18 would have ended last time. Uh, last no, year. last year it was like, I don't know, right in the middle of the course. Okay. And you had to walk to the opposite corner to get to hole one. So now we've got 18 and hole one right there by the parking lot. And um, so, yeah, the hole one, you start by throwing across the water. Mm -hmm. um, so it's got an elevated basket. It's a good starting hole. It's just 400 feet. It's it's pretty basic, pretty easy. Um, you should see a lot of birdies on this one. And this is a completely new hole. I like that hole one nice. and hole 18 are backed up to each other so that a big gallery can watch everyone teeing off and everyone finishing yes. on the uh, first few days. Yes. should be great. There's a ton of room for the gallery on those two holes. Yeah. And they get to see, like, because that's not, I mean, 400 feet, that's not a short hole. You get to see them bomb it. Like, you think that some of the people will be able to park it? Yeah, and I'm guessing the whole gallery is going to be able to stand all along the bridge on the right-hand side there and then all along the back side of the out-of-bounds. It should be amazing for beautiful uh, big hyzers coming into the basket. Yeah, when I say easy hole, I'm talking about for the field that's going to be. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> None yeah. of us are having a, the I'm easy not. side. Trevor's probably had it. That wasn't that hard for you, was it, when you played it? Uh, no, that's that's one of the really short putts I missed. Yep. Bad. So, cool. This is a completely brand new hole, which I think is a great new addition for the first hole. Brad. And then... So and two's right around the corner to the left as you're looking at the map there. So this is the this is uh, not a new hole. This is old hole 12. So okay. we're pretty familiar with this one already. Uh, you've got to make it to the corner, and then you've got a, a fun little approach around the corner uh, over the green. Bomber shot. That is so far. Yeah, two big boy shots, uh, and then the last shot, I can't stress enough how tight that is around the basket. The yeah, trees. it's actually like 350 and then like a 300-ish, wow. something like that um, shot. So yeah. it's really about play. It's really easy to go OB on that drive. Nice. 
cool. Nice. And then hole three is also not a new hole. Um, it's the same hole. It's the okay. uphill one. Um, very, very uphill. Yeah, yeah, and was, I've heard yeah. that they're not going to make that stuff on the right OB this year. Yeah, it's not marked in the caddy book, but there is OB long left by that that road. Yep. You can get past it. Yep. And this is something that we've talked about a lot with the uh, ball golf courses, where it's cool to watch them, you know, bomb it, but there's not a lot of, you know, uh, the cool, like, elevation and like tree like shaped shots and it like this one's got huge elevation yeah, yeah you get it back to back here too because right here going into par in the number four you get a huge downhill yeah. okay so this is old 15 so that old, three was old 13 they got rid of 14 and this is old 15 uh -huh. um it's i think it's a little bit longer this year but it's still the same pin position um just a huge downhill shot they're probably gonna be throwing a mid 460 some people might even throw a putter i don't know but uh yeah i think mid's gonna be the play for these guys and there's quite a bit of cabbage around it like it's not super open where the basket is. yeah it's right? tight in the basket and there's out of bounds on the green shallow so like most people are gonna throw like a little gentle hyzer or something to play straight finishes left and it's gonna have to carry that all that out of bounds yeah, that'd um, be another fun shot to watch Oh, so I mean, I think yeah. up top there is going to be a great place to not only take photos, but like just see. That's probably the most fun shot to watch, maybe on the yep, course. Probably, yeah. right? Cool. And then hole five is also the same. Um, it's the long par four that uh, the biggest arms are going to be able to just, uh, you know, get go all the way across the OB. Um, yeah. A little bit of a risk reward shot. I, I remember this one was really fun too, watching people go for it. Absolutely, that OB is pretty crazy. When you played it, how did you how did you approach this one with all that? I uh, just threw a forehand lay up to the right side there, and then it was like super easy approach. I, I birdied that one. Yeah, yeah I mean, there's a lot more room to the right here than what the yeah. map shows. Yeah, okay. Yeah. About how, about how far up did you go that with that first shot? I just went all hyzer, just super safe, probably no more than 350. Okay. He beat that last tree on the yeah. map there and was off to the right. Okay. So, yeah, yeah you left yourself like a Probably like 300, honestly. Okay. So, yeah, it was like 220 to the basket. Um, yeah, that one should be birdied a lot. Yep. Okay. And eagled. And eagled. Oh, yeah, eagled. Yeah. Eagled. That'll score eagled. well below. And that's one thing that we need to remember, though, is this is going to be rainy and crappy out. It's going to be... Oh, true. Uh, so there might not be yeah. too many people going for it, but... In that final day, man, some people yeah. just have to. That'll be the push, yeah. Yeah, and we're not going to have the wind that we had last year, so it won't be as cold and disgusting out, but it no. will be raining. Yeah. And then six, I think we jump into the woods for the first wooded hole of the... Uh... Yeah, we got a new, mm -hmm. first new hole. We got a couple new wooded holes. Um, and this, I'm going to go ahead and say, is the hardest hole. So when you're watching this weekend, definitely look out for this one. Um, it's going to be the separator. Completely uh, agree. Basically, you just don't want to finish right, and uh, there's not really a great great landing zone so just get as far as you can off the tee and then yeah make a good shot into the green this is a four and move on all day it seems like if yeah. your second shot gets lucky to have a run good for you but four and go from what i heard so you'll uh, be happy people, with it. from what i heard from the people playing the qualifier uh this one caused some trouble too so yeah i was happy with my par yeah heck yeah all right hole seven this is the one we started on actually and uh i threw a nice little leopard three turnover that almost aced it's gorgeous nice yeah. i mean he came out of the gates literally rattling chains oh, uh that's right. like the yeah. turbulence of the disc you could see it like shake everything by it, it was <laughs> oh it was on Ready a heater yeah so it's low ceiling so i think you're gonna have to like disc up to a fairway on this one and um yeah it's a slight turnover I like the idea. I like the I like the idea of getting the pros to really huck something too, like down a lane. Again, oh, this one this one's OB both sides, so both sides OB and the ceilings maybe twelve feet at best, fifteen feet. It's a tube. Yep. Nice. Yeah. All right. Hole eight. This is a partially uh part of the old woods hole. Um they they kind of widened it a little bit. It used to be super tight, um, but now it's a par four. And Honestly, this is a super fun hole. Yeah, super fun. And the OB kind of opens up there at the mouth. So, like, most people are going to throw past that tree that's 275. So there's not a ton of trouble to get into. But, like, you really need to be left after that tree to have a chance at birdie. Um, but this was a fun hole that's gorgeous. It looks really good. I bet it photographs amazing. Nice. This was a fun one. Um, so this is one uh, you had to have your first big carry of the day. Hit oh a, yes, this is the one where it's like 400 feet to uh, carry into the inbounds. Yeah. Um, if you don't land inbounds, you go back to that drop zone, and then you have to lay up. 
uh, yeah, both these shots, the approach and the drive, are monster yeah. shots. And, so um, 340 minimum just to get in bounce, huh? That's, yeah, that's uphill. That's a that's lot. That's uphill. It's, yeah, that's uh, not even. It's more it's like three, 400. Yeah, it's 340 maybe in that bottom corner. Oh, <laughs> you know, yeah, like yeah, the yeah. closest corner is 340. Um, um, yeah, that's that's not true. So yeah. this one, <laughs> that's incorrect. Yeah, uh, <laughs> um, this one, I I bogeyed. I was just barely ob on my on my approach because um, it's a smash uphill on the approach into what was old hole eighteen. Yeah, maybe um, three or four feet short. Um, that would have been a huge. I mean, you would have taken strokes in the field there. Um, yeah, there's another those that one stroke that would have. Yeah. Wow, that would have helped. So, cool. um, yeah, we uh, the whole card bogeyed this one and then the next one we all birdied um it's oh. it's old hole one um just a lot shorter and it's yeah they changed the pin location too instead of <laughs> yeah. being off to the right it's now straight ahead and it's going to be begging for ace runs i i don't want to say i want guarantee but this if there's a hole to be ace this weekend and you're placing bets place your bet on number 10 is going to get an ace well i see they have it on an island but i love to see that where they have a really hard hole and then the next one they have like an apology hole like hey, <laughs> sorry. Uh, yeah let's let's give you something that you know Maybe isn't so brutal. Yeah, and uh, really forgiving drop zone on this one, so it's worth the ace yeah, run. Absolutely worth the risk. Um, it's like a putting league shot from the drop zone, uh, just between two trees, but maybe 30 feet, 35 30, feet? 35, probably, yeah. yeah. All right, and this old hole two, just a lot longer. Um, I heard rumors that this might be turned into a par four, but a lot of the players were like, you know, saying that that's ridiculous. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> It's so long. Yeah, it's so long. yeah, it's a thousand feet. That's my uh, second drive landed up by the OB green, um, and then it's just kind of a little bit of a tricky approach into the green with uh, some like low ceilings, a lot of trees, a lot of garden. Really well trees. protected, yeah. Yeah. So this one is going to be super interesting to watch. I yeah. think, um, and you're going to see some bombs, maybe some people going for like some rollers to get the eagle. Absolutely. But when the pitcher makes it look like the the out of bounds is pretty narrow, is it is it that narrow? Like, are they going to have to? Oh, at the mouth there, like there's yeah. like there's that, that's kind of like the decider zone. Like uh, Trevor had a really good drive, so he could like basically go backhand, backhand, or he went yeah. forehand, backhand. So his backhand shot, he could easily kind of beat it past that neck. But like, if you don't get a good drive, that's going to kind of be a decision, like because yeah. that's a tough throw, especially if the wind's coming in your face. That's going to be and yeah, it's probably a weird hole. sixty feet wide at the. Uh, at the smallest point there and then it's not forgiving if you go out of bounds there and don't come back in like yeah. you're then it's yeah, still far. stuck back yeah, yeah. <laughs> a thousand feet that's nuts then i think this hole 12 is... is the one with the two baskets yeah yeah okay. um i just i mean i i knew there was another pin on this one i, I just uh -huh. yeah i absolutely parked the uh women's pin though Parked it. Well, parked I mean, it. that's there, there's something to say. Like, you heard of like the dark ace or whatever, like a dark park. Uh, was it a pretty easy layup from there, though, to get to the next one? This is the one where the basket plays up on the hill. So it's a park it or par it hole for sure. Yeah, this is the uh, same. This is old hole three. So same yeah. exact hole. Yeah. And then um, hole 13 is going to be old hole four, just a lot shorter now it's a par three instead of a par five yeah um all you have to do is just kind of make it across the water and it's just right there to the left uh this is it's a four or i thought this was a par four but i guess it's par three um it was a par four yesterday i believe yeah, i believe we played it as a par four yeah. yeah so i'm glad they made this a par three and yeah i think most of the guys are going to go for this one think so too the there's a lot of room to land deep of the yeah. hole so like the miss is just right and then and the pros the, are going to be able to throw it's 410 not 470 right am i reading that yeah, yeah, yeah 410 yeah. or 450 yeah, obviously 415 okay so the pros are going to be able to throw that most of them oh yeah, like, yeah, yeah i look yeah. at that and it's like well i'm definitely laying it up to the front of the river <laughs> and going over maybe not next year when my rating's 930 but for now yeah i laid up uh because <laughs> it was par four yeah uh-huh I probably still would have laid up. Um, it should be a pretty easy three for for these these guys. Big boys, yeah. And then fourteen uh, went back in. This is the I think it's a hole that you're going to see some differentiate a differentiation on some separation on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty. I mean, we've got OB on both sides. Um, we saw some unlucky kicks yep. that can happen, um, but you're really just trying to make it out of the woods, and then you have a pretty easy approach. But there is a 
um, a hazard green right next to the basket. So yep. uh, um, this one could be tricky in the wind. Honestly. What did what did you do on this one, Trevor? Did you uh, did you try I to shoot it up the? Threw a really great shot right to the uh, right outside of the woods. Nice. And then I just had a really easy approach. So yeah, I you played had a this pretty one, easy birdie. Played this one perfect. Yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, the shot he that required to get to the edge of the woods though, like he threw a rope. Was it? Um, yeah. it, I mean, yeah. head high. It was never more than head high. Just held. Uh, I mean, and it was gorgeous. Curve left at just the right time. Just at the end. Just yep. finished at the end. Yep. Oh yeah. Hell yeah. So then um, on a fifteen, this is another one that's um, same as last year, just different hole number, right? Uh, yeah. So same T box location. It used to be the impossible hyzer. And now they've got it over to the right on the side of the hill next to the OB green. And uh, this one was another one I missed a really short putt on. T-Bird 3, though, he sh threw a flex shot that was... Yeah, it's, think... it's kind of like a turnover or or a forehand like kind of under those trees. I think this is another one where we'll see some ace runs? Um, no. I mean... You could see an ace, but I don't know ace runs necessarily. What do you think? Fair. Yeah, because it's on a hill, so you yeah. kind of want to just like land right in front of the basket. Yeah. Fair. Which I mean, I don't think you could have landed any, any yep. better. Should have made that. But uh, okay, hole sixteen is uh, the same as last year. Although this map is not accurate at all. No, it's a little bit further. There's just one tree guarding the basket in the front of it. Right. There's not, not like a bunch <laughs> of trees. <laughs> yeah. There's just one huge oak. It's very. I took a picture of him in front of it as like to like kind of log the, the inaccuracy. But <laughs> yeah, it's one. It's a huge tree, but it's just one tree. Yeah. It looks like it's hiding it's, behind yeah. trees, but it's not. Yeah. Um, Maybe and it's, it's a little so further. I would say. I think it's probably like 350. 350 yeah, I think so too. Mm -hmm. um, but this is your forehand hole right here. Oh, and this, oh, actually, go one more page. That's the FPO. Oh, yeah, sorry. So the, That's okay. Yeah, the males actually throw go. from inside the... So it's a huge it's a huge forehand. Or huge... Yeah. I guess we saw Tony yeah. throw a, four, a turnover that was just a little long, but pretty good. Yeah, so this one I um, missed a 20-footer on. Brutal. Yep. Then uh, hole I seven... Gotta make those 20-footers. Can I ask how did the hazards really come into play that much? I mean, uh, they're it, actually all behind the basket. They're, okay. they're all further. They're all long. So. Yeah. So if you're long and left, you're in trouble or potentially in trouble. How do you feel? I mean, because that's a very interesting choice. Usually they do that on the ball golf courses. They'll put those hazards around there. Like, how do you feel it adds to the value of the hole? Like, does it really make the hole that much more different, challenging? I'm a huge fan of hazards. Yeah. I, Me too. I just, I don't know why. I just, really like the idea of like you're ob but you don't lose your distance you have to yeah well yeah exactly yeah. you you get to throw from the ob i, like I mean that. in some cases though if you go long and you go into a hazard it might there are some greens that are designed that have that ob that's really tight that you go way ob and you still have that like comebacker for par oh yeah because you get to take it but with the hazard actually it can punish you if you have to shoot from was your it, shot so it does make it just a little bit more interesting was that the simon yeah. incident you're referring yeah. to yeah oh yeah that's yeah, exactly what i was thinking of when yeah. simon just yeah. he, when he wanted to get a par he just threw straight ob like hundreds of like a hundred feet ob yeah. way past the basket and was able to just kind of tap in because the ob now, line was right up against the basket what are the what are the hazards though is that like the on the ball golf course is that like the ball golf greens or what? No, they're it just, just seems um, like kind of random. They're just, the actual bunkers. Yeah, sand traps. Oh, okay. So yeah. the actual sand traps. Cool. And then uh, 17 is a... So 17, the men are actually playing to the short pin as a part of three, and the yeah. women are playing a part four to the long pin, which I think that's awesome that they yeah. do this. Um, and um, um, this, one's, this one's like a turnover that's 400 feet uh, in the woods, mm -hmm. um, and it's a really fun shot. Yeah, uh, how's the it's like a on Roy it? G shot, but tighter. What's that? How's the ceiling on it? Uh, it's pretty high. Okay. Yeah, I guess the Roy G, you yeah. got pretty good ceiling. Yeah. So oh. this one's fun. Um, cool. I'll, I, I'll be, I'll probably, I would say like the women's pin is a lot harder to get to, so it might be a separator for the women. I totally agree. Um, I think just getting them to get it out of the woods in one is a huge ask, and you have to get it to the edge of the woods to have a look at the basket. So, yep, yeah. this one's going to be tricky for the women. Completely agree. Now, break down uh, eighteen for us. You, you teased how yeah. uh, how brutal this one is, and from the picture, six eighty five narrow as shit. Like, it looks pretty brutal. Tell us, uh, tell us about it. Yeah. So the first guy threw a mid range, and I was thinking to myself, that's smart. 
but he threw mid range way further than I could ever. And um, <laughs> it's crazy that was a mid range, isn't it? Yeah. 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 So, um, and he just threw a dead straight, which works. Um, mm. which is kind of what I was trying to do. Um, I just grip locked it right, and it, it went ob. <laughs> that's a that's one of the hard things. I've never been in a playoff before, but I can only imagine because usually I like, I like having the win read, right? But then you get the win read, but you see two people just yoke it perfectly. Yeah, they put like, the pressure on me. Really. Definitely put the pressure. Yeah. That's that's real pressure. Like that's more than just tournament jitters. You know what yeah. I mean? That's a uh, one of one of the one of them was Jaden Rye. I can't remember the guy who actually qualified. Uh, got the last qualification. Spot. I can't remember his name either, but he was in the zone. Yeah, yeah. They locked in. Good players. Good yeah, players. absolutely. Rad. I uh, had my work cut out for me if it even made past eighteen. So. Um, but yeah, congrats to them. And yeah, I, I I love the new design, and I think a lot of the players do too. I think they got rid of the bad holes and made good improvements. Yeah, I feel like all the holes that were an issue last year are just gone. They cleared up. And every addition, I'm very excited to see it get played. Um, I don't, very rarely is this the case in disc golf where everyone's pretty stoked about a course. Usually there's just like kind of bitching and complaining. Um, I think it's the opposite for this week. I think everyone's very ready to get out there and shred. That's really cool. That's because uh, I know last year there were a lot of people that didn't like it, but then they kind of warmed up to it a little bit after the second or third round. Like, okay, we're figuring this out. It definitely doesn't but, feel like a ball golf course, does it? That's uh, no, not the not in the style that like they traditionally yeah. do it on tour. So that's really cool. Yeah, it feels awesome. more just like a mix, almost like a Brazos East kind of style, like yeah. some openness, but a lot they of wood. used the woods really well. Yeah, right. Right. Well, I can't wait to see. We're going to have some people out there. You're going to be out there? Yeah, absolutely. So I'll be out there keeping score uh, all three days. And then uh, Trail Candy uh, himself, Mr. Trevor Williamson, will be out there taking photos. Uh, be sure to follow his Instagram feed all weekend long for all the uh, kind of up-to-minute, uh, behind-the-scenes stuff. And then if you're out there, you'll probably see Mr. Daniel Rigdon as well, too, getting his fan on, watching all the spots. Uh, so if you see any of us <laughs> out there, uh, be sure to say what's up. Uh, but that is, um, I guess we'll come back after this message and talk about our fantasy draft draft update but that's the open at austin preview from barely stable podcast we'll have more right after this And welcome back to the Barely Stable Podcast. Uh, thanks for continuing to be with us. Uh, a couple more things to talk about before we wrap it up today. Uh, first, we're going to go back to our fantasy draft. Ooh, uh, got the fantasy draft yeah, update. Waco is done and in the books, and uh, so is our first week, I guess. Uh, Absolutely. We learned a couple things. One, Kristen Tatar is inevitable. She is <laughs> like the like the guy who snaps. Yeah, what's the guy? Uh, I Thanos. Me a Thanos. Yeah, Thanos. Yeah. She's Thanos. Thanos of the FPO. Yeah. Wow. She was, what, six strokes back after round two and was five strokes in the lead after round three. Everyone else That is absurd. Dust. Um, good luck to everyone else in FPO. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know what to tell you. Uh, if imagine being someone's like swing coach or like caddy in FPO and having to like talk to them about like, no, you can beat her. You can beat Kristen. <laughs> you, you got, got it. You got yeah. it, dude. You can, yeah. Like, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, the broadcast yeah. just had to switch to the fight for second place storyline. It had to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was actually pretty interesting. It was a good one. Yeah. Um, do you Bye. notice that the FPO? Like day three is the most chaotic uh, of anything. Like it feels like no one knows who's winning it's, FPO yeah. until whole fifteen of the third day or fourth day. Well, or who's getting second and third? Or yeah, in this yeah. case, yeah. <laughs> Which or, unless Freeburg's team. unless Kristen had like a bad couple days or like got news that her Mercedes was towed or something, <laughs> and then like had to like oh I was only two down that second round, and then had to go put up an eight down. Um, it feels like she has this, um, she doesn't hit the most putts. She doesn't hit the most fairways. She doesn't, she doesn't lead any stat, but consistency across all of them. So she's not the best in any one thing, but she's in the top three of everything. She yeah. might be the best putter. Yeah. Oh, mean, she might be. That might be, but I, eh, she might be actually. I think wins is a stat that wins she is definitely the, got. And, right and playing with the lead too. <laughs> like she takes zero risks once she's in the lead. Like uh -huh. she knew she could give up four strokes on that last day and she didn't care to. She's like, ah, whatever, just take a par. Uh, or she also humbly takes bogeys well too. That's the thing I wish I could. Yeah. Wish I could mentally the bounce do. back. She's the, just amazing. Yeah. The not letting All the right. bogey affect the next hole. Like, yeah. We've talked about that in our own games, but it seems like she's got that down 
Speaking of amazing, Gannon Burr, the skyscraper from, where's he from? We don't know. I don't know. He's really tall and lanky, though. Uh, <laughs> the dude shreds Iowa. The, Looks like he could be from Iowa. The tall shredding kid. I don't know. I've seen him here a few times. I want to yeah. say he's from here, but I don't think that's actually Definitely not from Austin, but. <laughs> I was uh, I was really lo- rooting for Luke. Uh, I think most people were. I think everyone was. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, it was just tough to watch. I was there live. Um, yeah, watching his disc hit that green was tough to see. Yeah, keep the camera on Trevor real quick. Shout out, uh, you captured a lot of great shots on 17. You want to talk about a couple of those at Waco, uh, shooting for GGN? Uh, yeah, it was my first gig with Disc Golf Network. Um, at, yeah. the, at Lake Waco, I was on. I was posted up on hole 17 uh, T with stationary cam, which is like the super picturesque hole at that at that course. And, yeah, uh, yeah, it was really fun. Um, I got to film the third round uh, chase card. Which was a combined forty-two down. Jeez. Uh, um, yeah, Shred that middle. was like a legendary thing. I got super lucky to film. That's super. So cool. That was fun. Um, but yeah, as soon as uh, the players got past seventeen, I was clear, and I went to watch eighteen. And man, it was a it was a heck of a finish. What a finish! So you got to see Gannon make that putt on seventeen, then on the yes, yeah, yeah. I was zoomed in on the camera, yeah, yeah from the tee, and uh, man. Yeah. It's never a doubt, right? Legend. Yeah, dude. Never a doubt. What is he, like 19? Um, I don't know, but he'll continue to be very young because he has <laughs> ice in his veins. Yeah, so that like, should keep him very, very how, young looking for a long how time. How can he have that much ice and be that young? Like, I, you Don't know? you remember when you were dumb, you'd go like hit on any girl, not knowing how far out of your class that woman actually is? Uh, uh-huh. Just because, like, who knows? I feel like he has that, but with disc golf still. like He hasn't had any big, like like heartbreaking, like completely all fell away from him, like had like a 10 stroke league and then it all went away. (laughs) He doesn't have any of that big heartbreak. So like, I think that's a little bit of the advantage. Um, It's like sky's the limit, man. Only going up, right? You know who I was rooting for day four, to be honest with you? Nate Sexton. Yeah. Yeah. the lead card. That was so cool. I I, Sexton, I mean he was, he was rocking it. He was struggling that that last day. That if you haven't watched the Jomez coverage of him commenting on himself through it, it's very funny. He's very humble. Um, I think the most humble guy maybe in disc golf. Uh, but he shredded the first three days, just couldn't get the putt together on the last day. And um, I don't know. It's great to see him. Also, shout out Mr. Stokely. Everyone saw that ace, right? That huge yeah. ace. That was awesome. The you were talking about how he acted after he made it, just the just the like, you know, and the most present, I think uh, like he allowed himself to feel the joy. He didn't, he wasn't like too cool to just like feel how amazing it is to get an ACE on tour. Like that's an amazing thing. And he like allowed it and he was just, I don't know, it was pure joy. Uh, I don't want to say I was crying, but there was definitely that like yeah. moment of like, Oh, it was for so sure. Good. It was an emotional moment. Yeah. Uh, you know who I was excited about watching do really well was Mason Ford. Ooh. Hometown hero. Who had uh, Mason Ford on their team? He's the mm. uh, yeah, <laughs> mm. the the polar opposite, if you will, of of Gannon Burr. Like there is nothing tall or lanky about <laughs> Mason Ford at all. Yeah, that like, would be. I don't know if Mason's ever been called tall. Yeah, yeah he might yeah. be the last person to know when it and, rains. But just so, such great form and so uh, smooth. He yeah. reminds me almost like a Uli with that like yeah. compact, uh, small form, but yeah. so smooth. I, I feel like and, he can also throw. He could throw straight anywhere. Like, give him any direction, any wind, and he can put a disc on the right angle to make it go straight ahead, about head height. Um, just piped it. But we won't belabor too much on that. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, we <laughs> have to catch up. We all picked players from the fantasy draft. Um, uh, Trevor, uh, in our um, fantasy, um, what do we call them? Our commissioner? Commissioner. The commissioner himself. Uh, we'll turn it over to you guys uh, yeah. to walk us through uh, the... How What's we going do? on? Tell yeah. us about our scores and how we got them. Yeah, I mean, we've got right now on the screen, you can see everyone that we played. And then as far as the points go, um, my team struggled a little bit. I had 330 points. Um, next up, we had Freeberg with 450 points. And then we had uh, Nick with 460 points just right barely. there. Ooh, and then to win barely. this week, we had Trevor at 522 points. And tell yeah. us about how the points come up, because I yeah, know- Yeah, so like, let's talk about yeah. uh, where everyone placed. Uh, so I obviously got Gannon uh, winning, and then you had Kristen winning, Freeberg. Uh, no, Rigdon had I Kristen. Had, I had excuse Kristen. me, Rigdon, yeah, yeah. excuse yeah. me. And then 
Um, so you had Holland in third and uh -huh. and own in second. So yeah, um, yeah. So if we don't remember the one of the rules is we have to have a Texas player. Yep. So Texas player. Freeberg elected to have two women uh, since his Texas player is a woman, and um, it worked out this week. It worked out. Okay. Um, well. And then we also got to see that Paul McBeth did not do very well. Yeah, yeah. He's still warming up, man. He's uh he's a little bit older guy. He's uh he's can, I up. mean, can we give him he's, a break? He's got the foundation, he's got Olympus he's, like the I dad mean, bods in full effect. Yeah. Easy. Uh, easy. Don't be, but he, don't be he was, the dad bods now. That's... He did look awfully soft in the midsection. <laughs> he and he fills out the shirt a little bit more now. No, no, um, he's just he's building it up so he can get more spin on it, you know, like the Babe Ruth uh I think he's excited for MA forty. <laughs> I'm kidding, Paul McBeth. I'm kidding. Six time respect. Uh, yes. Um, uh, and then for Rigdon's team, we got Simon not doing great, nope. Bradley not doing great. Well, Bradley actually right. had a great tournament. Yeah. Um, just a couple bad breaks. Just um, yeah. like one bad round. Um, Kristen obviously give, giving you all the points. That's probably going to be a consistent thing this year. Um, I had Valerie as my Texas player who had a great tournament. Great tournament. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ricky not doing his best, but still getting that top ten like he knows how. And then Bar, you your 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 boys did good. So the yeah. the Waisaki tenth was probably the winning placement for you though, right? Uh Gannon got me two fifty. The first place is huge. Oh, okay. All huge right. points. All um right. but yeah, uh I didn't have anyone outside the top ten almost. So um that I think yeah. I, th I think it's first place is what did it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Can't ever. Now, can you show us how we came up with the points? Because uh, just yeah. for our people listening or watching, uh, there's kind of a, a skew with the points. So, like, first place is 250 for MPO or FPO. But then as you go lower in places, the FPO points aren't worth quite as much because there's not quite a, there's not as many people in FPO. So, um, you know, a, a number seven. Uh, finish or a top seven finish in MPO is going to give you a little more points than a top seven finish. In. I like that uh, yeah. winners are rewarded. Yeah. 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 It's and the hardest we, thing to do. I completely yeah. agree. We copied that. What was the site we copied that from? The the scores? This is all from Skip Ace. Skip Ace. Yeah. So we copied that from Skip Ace. Shout out. No free ass. Shout out. Skip Ace. Thank you for the scoring. Yeah. Sorry. We didn't just do it on Skip Ace. This was easier. <laughs> 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 Probably not easier, but um, it's, this is what we're doing. It's what we had. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we have our commissioner. Yeah, uh, the yeah. the draft was so hacky that uh, I feel like we needed our own uh, hacky system. We, how could we have work. fixed the draft? What would have been a better way? Um, well, we picked the Texas player, and we didn't have uh, a bench for our Texas player. We maybe could have done that. That that would have been the only way to make it better. And then also maybe just decided, even though you do have the points, you kind of have the MPO, and you have left points, less points for the FPO. It is a little weird to have a Texas player that's an MPO and then somebody also playing a Texas player that's an FPO. Um, I feel like it can maybe just be skewed a little bit. Should we hold one more round of the draft to correct the issue and then you are forced to select something that fits the bill of what you just described? Yes, I think we should do that on a later episode. Okay, maybe we'll have that plan for next episode. Yeah. Okay, that's so great. should we pick our guys for uh, this week at uh, the Open in Austin? Yeah, for sure. Cool. So here's the overall lineup. So we do have to have one Texas player. So we know Freeberg's choosing Holland. Yep. Holland will be yep. in our Texas. And then my uh, FPO will be uh, own, obviously, still. Well, you can have uh, Holland as your you can have Holland can as your FPO. No, I want I want Holland as my Texas. And I think that both her and Own are gonna do really well. And then MPO is really hard because uh, the Eagles still not playing, right? Uh, and then so yeah, you're know. forced to take Matt and Paul, huh? Yeah, uh, uh, I don't know. I think I'm gonna go. I think I'm sticking with my boy. I'm sticking with Paul. I love it. You got it, Paul. Bring it. Uh, I love it. And uh, yeah, Matteo. Uh, I think he's gonna do really well, but I feel like Paul's kind of coming off and. Uh, He's gonna do a little better. He's gonna he's gonna remember that he's the champion. He's supposed to win for me. So, wow, that is interesting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I would have gone Matteo, but yeah, I think Matteo too. Uh, uh, I, but I, uh, I I, you gotta it. you gotta put you gotta put ball on the bench after that performance, man. But Matteo didn't do much better at. Didn't the... you hear the dad bod? Or are you or are you think the dad bod's gonna do? Dad it this bod's weekend? helping, man. Right. Dad bod's where it's at. 
And this one's only three rounds, so he's not going to get his tired. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, that was terrible. Um, um, so in that case, I bet Nate Sexton shreds this weekend. Yeah, yeah. Because speaking of dad bods, <laughs> oh, don't be not. just kidding. We know we love you, Nate. Um, all right, so Rigdon, what are you gonna do? Uh, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. So I'm going Simon uh, for my MPO spot. I know the course has changed a lot, but Simon came from what? Not even. The, was it even the chase card or was it even the card behind the chase card? Whatever fourth, he got. Fourth card. He yeah. got, there we go, to get second place uh, last year. Like, what a run he had. I definitely, yeah, when I was there last year, I was watching the lead card and then was checking maybe like halfway through and was like, oh, he's he's making a run and like jumped back to Simon and was just watching his absolutely incredible round. Um, and then yeah, again. Who are your other players? So my other choices, I could... Uh, I could pick Dickerson or Evelina. Oh. Obviously, mm, you're going with Christian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So for my Texas player, I'm going to go Bradley Williams again. I mean, I have, he's the only Texas player I've got. So I'm going to mm-hmm. go with him. And then, yeah, of course, Christian. Again, she struggled uh, last year. It was mm, yeah. very rare for her again, but it it's just when you watch her play, it literally was all up to her. Like she kind of gave it away, it was still all in her control the whole time. So as long as she doesn't have a bad day, no one can touch her. Like, that's just how it is. If she doesn't have a bad tournament, she's going to win. That's just how it is. He's that's just how it, it is. Outlet, didn't he? Uh, she is inevitable. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> what do you got, Trevor? Hmm, okay. Uh, can I see my whole lineup? Yeah. Yeah, I feel like uh, Trevor actually has a decision to make here. Yeah. Yeah, because I have two Texas players, so I've got some... I've always got some decisions. Uh, we Gannon earned his spot, so we got Gannon, and I just have to decide who my Texas player is. Really, um, do we go Emerson or Valerie? How's uh, what's Emerson like? Uh, distance game, like so he got a big arm. Yes, he could throw just as far as everyone else, I believe. Emerson might. This might be a course for him. Um, I want to root for Valerie so bad, though. Uh, how, she, how did she play on the uh, Brazos rounds last week? So that well. that's where Let's I would see. that's where I'd make my indication. Yeah, I'd from. have to do some research, yeah. but um, my gut's just gonna tell me we're going. I guess we're going Emerson. Yeah, yeah, I think Emerson will actually do well in this course. Yeah, I think so. he'll take advantage of some of those bomber holes too. But you can still bomb, run yeah. Valerie as your FPO if you wanted to. Yeah. But Missy hasn't Missy's, like Missy's you know her lost hat. her her spot. I would say. Yeah, and she's still slinging. So we're just gonna try try out Emerson. We'll see how that goes. Oh yeah. Um, I'm gonna make no changes either. Um, I think it's cool. Like, uh, Vinny will be back. Um, just this won't be it for him. And is he playing this week? I have no idea. I would guess he's not, just based on the amount of forehands he's gonna have to throw. He's losing his um. His, his number one spot on the rankings since he's not playing. Yeah, which has got to be frustrating for him. Oh, I doubt he cares. Oh, um, you don't think he cares? He seems like he's he wouldn't ca- care. Pretty he's pretty carefree, carefree. yeah, yeah. Um, I watched uh, last year's final round when he had like that tough start, like three OBs in the first two holes, um, and could care less. He just was still putting like lights out and still fought in and still was like in the mix at the end. Yeah, if you... If you just uh, like watched his face the whole round only, you wouldn't be able to tell if he's doing good. Bad. Absolutely, not. or you wouldn't even tell if he's ever like smiled because he's kind of just always just num, 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 num. like he's not mad. He's just we not love Calvin. Yeah, uh, he's my favorite player. He's like no one else I want to watch. That's fine. But That's like awesome. th- when he's locked in, there's like zero change in emotion and jealousy. That's uh, yeah, I wish I had that's it. What I'm looking for. Wish I had <laughs> it. Um, but yeah, AB. I think he'll. I think AB's got a chance to win. I think him and. Uh, uh, Gannon Burr will go at it. Um, That's what I was going to say. Yeah, I think those two will be battling at the end. Um, it's really whose putt gets hot uh, is going to be probably the winner this weekend. Hey, B. We, uh, one of my buddies saw him last year. He was staying at like a house, and like the power wasn't working, and they had some issues. And uh, Yeah, I thought we were all cool because we went to the skin match with uh, um, Mason and Ezra and Gannon. And then my buddy was like, oh, yeah, well, uh, Anthony Barilla's staying at the house next to mine. I'm going to go take some pictures with him and get him to sign some discs. That's pretty <laughs> cool. Like, hung out with him, yeah. Yeah, that's sweet. But they were super cool. And he's he's a pretty – he was an older guy too, so. Uh, awesome. It was Yeah, they were just super rad to hang out yeah. with him and talk disc golf. Sweet, sweet. Well, Cat March, uh, round up the FPO, I think she's uh, – this is 
like a Jonesboro types course, uh, I think this is where she can play well. But also, uh, she's got one of the bigger arms in the FPO um, in her field. So hopefully, she can take advantage of some of those uh, those holes where she can throw far. But uh, yeah, that's our fantasy draft update. Uh, we did want to do a quick uh, ratings day update. It's uh, ratings day here in uh, the world of disc golf. It's uh, the first Tuesday of the month, uh, right? Every and other Tuesday is for tacos. Every other Tuesday is for tacos. Um, that's my favorite <laughs> post that we have um, um, on the whole social media game. Yeah. But uh, we had some we had some movement uh, across the board. Uh, Freeberg played uh, his rating all month. Yeah. That's, I I was so up and down. I had one really garbage round and then I did the thing where I played a ton of rounds to try to bury it and apparently I played just enough and just well enough not to go down. So he had some big rounds. He had some great rounds yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. He had some shreddy rounds. Round. Yeah, absolutely. Shout out, shout out Freeberg ranked uh, in Global Master Series. Yeah, Global Masters uh, 114. <laughs> Dude, that's crap. sick. Not last. That's, uh, yeah, I've been playing a lot, so I guess uh, it's working out for that's me. That's actually really good. Yeah, uh, you, Global yeah, Master Series, uh, I've always had a goal. I don't think it would be this year or even soon, but like being in the top 100 of Global Masters would be incredible. Oh, but you have okay. to play a lot, and you have to have to be really good. Oh, well, I do play a lot. The really good thing, I, I still got some work. How did I do? I uh, dropped four points. I did not play so good. So far this year, uh, I've been struggling a little bit. But you played really well at Moody's on yeah. Saturday. Oh, um, man, if only that was rated. I think that's part of it, though. You're kind of retooling your putt and retooling some of your throws. And Yeah, what's the, I, uh, not excuse, but do you, do you have uh, an idea of why? Yes, I think that I'm just very much in transition with a lot of things in my game. So I've been playing for years, and I'm just getting to the point where I'm kind of tired of all my lazy ways, and I'm starting to fix things, and it's just really messy because I'm just kind of trying to do a little bit of everything. So I'm going to get a lot worse before I get better, which I'm okay with. Yeah, well, that's, I'm okay with that. I see, I've see. i seen you making shots now that I know that when we met a year ago, you couldn't make. And putts. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. putts. So it's, I, I think the improvement is there. Of course, when I met you, you were like, I'm 850. I'm going to be 850 forever. <laughs> it's true. And, and that was just a year ago. Yeah. I'm not so, 850 anymore, which is good. Yeah. And uh, I think you're tracking the right direction. Oh, yeah, thank for you. Sure. Well, yeah. Not this ratings update, but. Well, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Overall. Well, uh, I think anytime you do Overall, growth, you got to have that little bit of down before you can do the yeah. big growth pass. Yeah. 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 If you would have played 35 tournaments with me, probably. <laughs> saved it's it. very possible. <laughs> I got super fortunate that some old things dropped off because I had one of my worst rounds ever this past month and somehow still bumped up some points. You had some good rounds. You had some bad stuff drop, but it's closing in on that 900, kid. That's uh Oh, the sacred land of 900 beyond the bridge. Uh, we'll see if there's any <laughs> dragons or uh, fairies over there if we ever get there. Um I don't know. Ratings are weird. Uh, I was for sure thought I was going down um, this month. I was happy to go back and beat uh, Ben Brook, though, and get a good round there this last week at Fuego. You did, yeah. too, um, at Fuego Friday. So that was fun. Um, don't want to like, win rounds. or when... Do you see your Global Master Series? Right? Yeah. What is it? 65, son. Oh, Top holy. Top baby. Oh, whoa. That will correct itself as the season goes on. There's no way that holds. Um, you keep playing every uh, every week or so. Keep putting those. That's good absurd. Up. Um, yeah. That's absurd. That's just because it's. That's I think it's because we're in Texas and we've played more rounds. Like once everyone else is playing, because <laughs> everybody yeah. else is still. Because it's annually. Oh, yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, right. So everyone once else's it's, weather's bad. Yeah. 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 Um, well, you got a head start. We do have a little head start. I need all the start. God bless get. Texas. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, uh, that's a quick ratings uh, day up. Tre Trevor, uh, also, um, sorry, got yours there. <laughs> sorry, almost yeah. um, our highest rated and what we consider our crown jewel of the podcast. Yes. Uh, I'm almost to 100 events. Yeah. That's, uh, Ooh, um, that's what do you know? Do you have any plans for your 100th event? Like what yeah. you want your 100th event to be? I should Special make one? some plans. That's kind of cool. I don't cool. know. I don't yeah. know. I think we should maybe go drink afterwards. Okay. Celebrate a hundred rounds of Trevor. Yeah, I don't know what it's gonna, which one it's gonna be, but we'll see. We, should we make something up like a centennial, like what it means to get your hundred rounds? Because that's a pretty <laughs> yes. big mark. That's an awesome thing. That's huge. so like your disc golf centennial or something. Either way, we're definitely celebrating it with some beers and some uh, vitamins of the adult nature. I'm sure. Um, a trophy. We <laughs> trophy. should make a trophy. Uh, I mean, like an achievement I, trophy. I'm just like trying it. to distract from the fact that I uh, went down again. Um, uh, it's one point. You're it's one point. It's 60s. like the third week in a row, or not ah. third month in a row, and I'm like, all right, we gotta kick it in gear here. 
and we will. We will. Yep, you absolutely. Yeah. You got some good events coming up too. Um, ones that you're excited about, I know. So um, I have no doubt. Uh, what do you have? Like a goal that you were trying to shoot for uh, ratings wise, or are you in the pursuit of a thousand, or like what's your real uh, ratings goal? Um, I think my goal for the past three years has been like get as close as I can to a thousand. Okay. Um, I just basically my goal is always to shoot a thousand rated at mm-hmm. least uh-huh. um, every round I play because that's all you can do in order to be a thousand rated. So, um, yeah, just shoot as many a thousand rated rounds as I can. That's awesome. That's the goal. Wow. Well, we are here to be in support of yeah. that. Uh, that's awesome, man. Um, yeah. From an intermediate perspective, it's fucking. Absolutely. It's a great thing to see. I am uh, here to shoot ten more strokes than you wherever <laughs> you need it. Um, no, it'd be a funny <laughs> thing to go is like take Trevor's rounds that he plays this year. So like, let's say you play a hundred rounds this year, and then yeah. we play a hundred rounds. How many more times we threw the frisbee than you in those hundred <laughs> rounds yeah. of disc golf? Like we played like four or five more rounds of disc golf just because <laughs> we cause threw the, the disc that. The, many more times yeah all right well we won't uh keep you here anymore guys uh, we appreciate you tuning into the barely stable podcast uh make sure you check us out on every place that we do social anywhere media podcast uh anywhere we just social media too we got to at, at uh, barely stable podcast um at barely stable podcast dg at what's that on x, x um uh, Instagram, Facebook. I don't think there's anything else. YouTube. Else. Yeah, um, all the things. We got all the we things. We have stuff. I love to. And things. I love to name the things. Uh, anyways, thank you so much for being with us. Watch out for those iron leaves. And uh, remember, just be cool. Be cool.